I'm Nuria Oliver. I am an expert in artificial intelligence. I am co-founder and vice president of ELIS, the European Laboratory for Learning and Intelligence Systems. I'm also chief scientific advisor to the Vodafone Institute and chief data scientist in Data Pop Alliance, which is an NGO devoted to the use of data and AI for social good. The term data science um, refers to the discipline that leverages and uses different sophisticated data analytics methods, including data-driven machine learning methods to um, transform you know, unstructured data into insights. Mobile data is extremely valuable to model both individual human behaviors and traits and also aggregate human behavior. So the most uh, commonly used type of mobile data particularly for social good scenarios, is what is called call detail records. And this is data that is passively captured by the mobile network infrastructure. So it's very uh, coarse data, but when you aggregate it over time and also in space, it enables us to model uh, the behavior you know, of a large scale population. And there are many uh, scenarios where this data has proven to be valuable. During the pandemic, I, I was named commissioner to the president of the Valencian region on AI and data science against COVID-19. I'm leading a team of over 20 scientists from the Valencian region, working on different areas in the intersection of, uh, I guess, data science and the pandemic. So the first area is understanding mobility and measuring mobility. Um, obviously, an infectious disease that is transmitted from human to human doesn't become a pandemic if we don't move. And that's why mobility is so important. The second area that we have worked on is computational epidemiological models. So models that enables us to run simulations of how the pandemic could evolve under different scenarios of confinement measures or other types of non-pharmaceutical interventions. The third area is the development of predictive models. Then the fourth area is a very large scale citizen survey. This survey enables us to understand what is the actual impact of the pandemic on people's lives? What are people's behaviors during the pandemic? Uh, what is the emotional impact, the labor impact, the economic impact? The fifth area is a new area that we um, started in the context of the XPRIZE Pandemic Response Challenge competition. So we built an artificial intelligence system that for any country and region in the world, it would recommend up to 10 different policies um, that had the best trade-off between their cost and the number of COVID-19 cases that would result if you applied those policies. The drivers for most of the technology that we use um, is not our well-being, is basically making as much profit as possible for the shareholders and the owners you know, of the companies that develop such uh, systems. Europe has taken a leadership position in the world in terms of regulating AI. Uh, in April of 2021, so a couple of months ago, they published a proposal for a regulation of AI in Europe. It is um, a proposal that is based on establishing a risk system or a risk methodology where um, one would need first to assess the risk of a certain AI system. And then depending on the risk and there are different categories of risk, the system is subjected to different uh, types of regulations. So there are steps going in a direction of placing people in the center of the development of technology and ensuring that you know, people's um, well-being and human rights and, and dignity you know, uh, and autonomy you know, are preserved. But uh, we are at the very, very beginning of this process. Technology is ubiquitous and uh, it, it sort of like impacts every field. And uh, it is very um, worrisome that the field has such a lack of diversity. It's very difficult to have diversity as an output if you don't have diversity in the input. So we do really need to make this effort of being diversity conscious. It is absolutely necessary to invest very aggressively in um, education at all levels, of starting with uh, compulsory education. I think it will be very important to include computational thinking as a core transversal subject 
computational thinking is also emphasizing and developing some human abilities that we might be losing because of an excessive use of technology. Technology that is very limited in many of our human abilities. Abilities such as, you know, our, our sort of like creativity, our critical thinking, our social intelligence, our emotional intelligence, those abilities have been absolutely critical to our survival, evolutionarily speaking. And they define us as homo sapiens. Having uninformed society is very dangerous because it makes everyone very susceptible to manipulation. Collectively, as a society, we should be able to decide what kind of technological development we want for ourselves, but we cannot make such a decision if we don't know, if we don't understand you know, what we are talking about. I always say we shouldn't confuse uh, technological development and innovation with progress because not every technological development represents progress.